you two. This is Bayou here. What I got for you today is uh, a little training or a little demonstration on a knife that is used for cooking and the appropriate knife that you can have for both um, for both teams, for both operations. Uh, I have BK2 that at the beginning when this uh, knife hit the market it was uh, well respected. It was so like it was the uh, marvelous thing on the earth. And of course, I uh, fell for the trap and then I bought it. Almost a hundred bucks, or close to a hundred bucks. I have uh, a copy of the, um, um, uh, this is called the uh, Bolo Bolo knife, or the Bolo machete, shrink a little bit. That is light. Uh, by the way, this is, I think this is US made. This is made, believe it or not, in China, but you're not the model. Uh, also, it can be used in the field for chopping trees and branches and stuff like that. I have the, uh, one of my subscribers says, I favor Russian equipment. No, but if you were in the business of uh, soldiering, you always pay close attention to the other side. If you're not, you're stupid. And allow me to express it. So this is the Russian version of the uh, military knife. Uh, and then I have the new purchase that I made, which is very long handle, very comfortable, a female light, and it's not heavy. And also, look at the size of the, uh, what is that called, the backbone of the knife? I don't have my uh, comment right here, but I think it's around uh, six millimeters. Six millimeters wide. It's a very, very thick knife. Now the BK2 is seven millimeter. So this is one millimeter less than the BK2. And what I have right here are a small neck knife. This is uh, Pakistani, I believe. No, also made in China. Okay. I don't have the Pakistani knife with me. I have a uh, El Chipo kind, Walmart special, packing knife. This is less than $4. And a brand new one that I just purchased today, Korean. Yes, this is made in Korea. And this is surgical sharp. I'm afraid to play with this. It doesn't have a lock, so I have to be careful. So, let's go ahead real quick and do this on your cat to see if it's appropriate for cooking. Not really, it give you a little resistance. So for chopping plain onion, this is not great. And it looks very sharp. Okay, the uh, El Chipo, Wally World, less than $4. Much better, a little bit faster. Yes, this could be used as a field cooking knife. They're very nice, two inches, my style, and it could be used as ladies, it could be used as a neck knife. It's a little bit kind of heavy. Uh, what do we have here? It's not as sharp as the Wally World, but it cuts, no problem. Okay, it does the job. It cuts, no problem. Okay, so you know that the small knife has no issues with uh, with onions. What I have right here is mushrooms. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside for a second. So we're gonna start with the Ruski. It's just 100% Russian, AK-47 bayonet. And let's see if I can slice a mushroom. Just like a hot knife on butter. Okay. So, for those who like to pick on Russian equipment, this one is passing the test on mushrooms. I bet you a ring of tomato, it will cut the slice of tomato with no problem. So it's a go. 
my big a copy of uh, Bolo Machete, but this is more like a it's more hunting knife than anything. I call it in the Spanish a Mata Chancho, pig killer, because it will do the job on the pig. But let's see if we can use it in the kitchen. First of all, it's a little bulky. And I don't trust it on my fingers. So, unless I don't have a small cooking knife, uh, I will not chop anything small. I will not cut anything small, okay? Even if I, after I kill the pig, I will not use it for that. Now, the BK2, original. Let's see what we do in this one. No, guys. This one, squash the mushroom. It's not feel comfortable, okay? And it's heavy. I feel it in my wrist, okay? So now let's try to pick what's using the onion. It cuts it, but it's very uncomfortable. I don't feel nothing comfortable. Okay, this flunks the knife uh, onion cutting. Let's try the uh, bolo knife, the bolo machete knife. Okay, smooth. No problem. Yes. It's not as heavy as the BK2, but it's longer. So it's a little bit accurate. Not bad, but a little bit accurate. And you can see how thin the onions are. So it's okay, a little uncomfortable. Let's try the ruski. Okay, it doesn't do as good out of a job as the mushroom, very catching. It's a little bit shorter than the uh, BK2 and then the uh, bolo knife. But not, not as good as the small ones. Okay, so I have, I'm gonna get another piece of onion and we're gonna try the last one. This right here is a SCHF 56. Uh, I already gave you the millimeter thick is six and then it is uh, eight and a half, eight and a, uh, 85 millimeters long, okay? Now, if you have a female, if you have a female or a small male, uh, this very this is a very practical knife. It does the cutting. It's not as sharp as the other ones, but it can be used. Okay, it could be used. It would not be my first choice for cutting onions or in the kitchen, but uh, going back to the one that I like. Tough, you can hear that chopping it, is that smooth. Two and a half inches. Too small, guys. It does the job, but it's too small. See? This is this this is almost like the Ulu knife, the uh, uh, Alaska knife. See? So, okay, we're gonna stop over here for a second. Let's try the my new Korean one. This is the first time that I use it, guys. First ever. It's not sharp enough. Okay. So, let's go back and talk a little bit about cooking knife. Big knife, macho man knife, completely out of the question. Okay, it's completely out of the question. You cannot use in the kitchen. If you have a professional cook nearby, probably slap you silly and kick, and kick you out of the kitchen. Uh, it could be used for uh, making a fire stick, uh, uh, cutting branches, but completely out of the kitchen. Waste your money, waste your time. My pig killer, it's okay, but
but you don't feel comfortable with your fingers being in the way. It doesn't chopping good. Unless you uh, practice some more on this, and you don't you don't feel uncomfortable with it. This is funny. It looks like it's cracking already, but it's not. Here you go. It's a big one. That's the kitchen work. Uh, the ruski. It's not sharp enough. And you see? It's not getting it. It's slicing like the other one. You have to move it back and forth. It's not good. Okay, this is also a, not a kitchen knife. So that leaves us with this one one more time. It's not sharp enough, guys. Okay, but it's very comfortable, maybe for meat or maybe for potatoes. It does the job of mushrooms, but not in onions. Okay, now, so you have the three small ones. This is out of the question, my new uh, Korean one. These are the two choices. And if you can see what I was trying to go at the end of this, is that for cooking, you do not need a big knife. You do not need a macho man, a killer kick, or a combat knife, or a, so, something like a BK2. You're wasting your money. If you need a cooking knife, you need very a small practical knife, guys. Now, I don't have... Okay, guys, look at this one. Stainless steel, Chinese. Not even one millimeter thick. I make the handle because the plastic uh, handle broke. This is a very old knife. And if you, cameraman, do you see the serrated edge? This knife, you look at it, I'm not gonna take it to the field, I'm not gonna take it to the wood because if you look straight, it's bent. And the handles are kind of loose because it was my first, what, what's the name of this part right here? Cacha is in Spanish, I don't know the English name for this yet, but I made a mistake on the uh, brass rivet, I didn't cut it. But, take a look at this guys. How thin it is. A 99 cents old knife great in the kitchen. So once again, a hundred dollars knife is worthless in the kitchen. A 99 cents knife, even though the plastic uh, handle has broken and replaced it with pine wood. This is yellow pine wood, guys. <laughs> My first one, so give me a break. It's practical, it's clean, Stainless steel, great for the kitchen. Of course you're not gonna cut a branch with this. Look at how bent it. But for the kitchen job, it's excellent. So once again, if you are in the market for a knife, think about the purpose of the knife. Don't let advertisement stick you with this expensive one. They're not good for the kitchen. And keep in mind, if you are in the field, you have to cut some onions, some potatoes, some carrots, open some can, chop, you know, uh, pieces of ham or something like that, canned ham, you know, a little pieces of meat, bacon, you name it. This could be used also for the silverware. I like to use this one for silverware. I like to use this one as a silverware. What I'm trying to tell you is be careful the way you spend your money. I know it's your money. I know you can do whatever you want to do with it, but you're not going to be able to cook with this. That's what I'm saying. And this this video was dedicated to one of my uh, subscribers, not that far from my house. She works in a supermarket. And what are you going to talk about this female knife? I want to know about this female knife. This is it right here. If you sharpen a little better, okay, may a professional knife sharpener. You could use it, and you could use it for uh, cutting branches, open cans, because it's six millimeter thick, guys, okay? And the price of this one was about $16 or $17.
and, and it's not that heavy and a female and or small man or small teenager boy or girl can handle it without without having a problem without being insecure so again small comfortable knife is what you need to do okay unless you six feet 300 pounds six feet 250 pounds that feels the need for power <laughs> okay guys Thank you for your time. Thank you for our new subscribers. 99 cents knife in the kitchen. Superior. These big ones are worthless. Think about it before you pack one for in your backpack for emergencies. Okay? Talk to you later. Behave. See you later, guys. Now I have to clean this mess. <laughs>